All right, everybody, welcome to the final installment video for the first snapshot for Minecraft Java 1.17. That was a mouthful. Kind of like waxed, lightly weathered, cut copper stairs, which I believe now holds the title for longest name of an item in Minecraft. Hope you never have to fit that on an item frame. Anyway, if you missed the first couple videos I posted talking about the copper and the amethyst geodes, feel free to check those out at any point. I'll link them below and also at the end of the video. And also, sponsor for this video, the like button. Check it out right down below the video. It's good stuff, and let's jump into it. First up, let's look at candles. They were teased a bit during the Warden unveil, but nothing was actually said about them. They were just there on frame, and then silence. But here we have them. So it's another use for bee-related products. We have honeycomb below some string, and you get a one-to-one -one candle recipe. Pretty cool stuff. And much like sea pickles or turtle eggs, you can place multiple in a single block, up to uh, four of them, and they kind of offset so it looks a little bit randomized. You can break them again using your fist and you'll get them all back, no issues there. And uh, you light them using a flint and steel, as you'd probably expect. Just one click will light however many are on the block, so you don't have to do one at a time. And you can still break them, they come back to you, they just won't be lit up again. You can also place them underwater, They'll waterlog, but you know, as you would expect, yeah, you can't you can't light them because that wouldn't that wouldn't make a, a great deal of sense now, uh, would it? But that doesn't make a great deal of sense either. We'll get to that in just a second. You can also um, unalive, or I should say, dye the the candle by just putting it with some dye on the crafting table. So we get a red candle there. It's obviously going to do only one at a time, just like you would expect. But then you got yourself a red colored candle, which is cool, and you can light that up. It doesn't seem to do the flickery lights thing, but again, maybe that's to do with the warden. It'd be really cool if the warden actually ends up doing the flickery light thing with the candle like we saw in in the demo, but who knows if that'll happen. These are all the candles laid out. It's not every single color, but it's most of them when you include the white and black candles over there. Just to show, you know, the randomization of the configurations based upon how many you place down, etc. All the colors and things like that. And, while you can't place a candle on top of a slab, thank goodness, you can do it on cake. You can do it on cake. But only one at a time. <laughs> Don't tell me that's a dupe bug. There might be a dupe bug. <laughs> you can put one candle on a cake. And if you like to duplicate your candles, then, um, well, go ahead and d d duplicate your candles. Uh, I didn't realize that was a thing, but I'm glad we've just discovered it live. We're, we're keeping it in. We're keeping it rolling here. Of course, it wouldn't be complete without actually lighting our birthday cake candles, which then illuminates the cake and makes it look all nice and stuff like that. So there you go. Cakes with a, with a single birthday candle. Otherwise, feel free to duplicate them, which will probably be fixed by... I don't know, the next snapshot. I wouldn't be surprised. Anyway, the candles do uh, emit light, so if we come over into here, seal ourselves in, and we've got tinted glass. I thought I'd, I'd put that to use from the previous video. Again, check out the previous videos after you're done here if you haven't. So if we light these up, we get some candle light, which is pretty nice. And you actually get varying amounts of light depending upon how many candles are lit. But we'll get more on that in, in just a moment. Also, uh, I saw some of these design ideas on Reddit and thought I'd Put them out here so you can take some of the items that are just you know single pixel or, or I, I should say uh two by two pixels in the middle of a block and you can use them as candle holders this is a lightning rod looks really cool with the orange candle end rod with the white candle uh, bamboo with the lime green candle you could use all sorts of different types of the stained glass panes and put whatever candle on top of them could do it with all of these of course only one at a time but it's really cool you could have, oh man, this would be so cool as like a place setting in, in the middle of the table. Anyway, let me quickly jump to showing the different light levels from the different amounts of candles. Here's everything laid out so you can see the different light levels. We have one candle over here, and if you hit F1 with the spyglass, you can do full screen zoom. Something that I didn't catch when I was recording the previous video, but here's that updated tip. Then we got two candles, and then three over here, four, and a torch for comparison. So if we go up in the sky, you can see that the one candle is like a 3 by 3 ish area up to like a 5 by 5 7 by 7 9 by 9 and then the torch at 11 by 11 for comparison. So once you get up to four candles, it's a pretty decent amount of light there. And also, really liking the full screen spyglass zoom by hitting F1. I don't know why I didn't think of that. 
when I was recording the other just a short while ago, but here we are. So that's pretty much it for candles until maybe we get the flickering effect from the warden. I'm looking forward to the warden being added, but anyway, that'll be later. Let's get into bundles, which are another one of the things I was most looking forward to. Looking forward to everything. Okay, whatever. You caught me. Let's get the crafting ingredients. It's string and rabbit hide. You can look up bundle over here in the crafting guide. And it's nice. It gives it a use for rabbit hide. Poor desert rabbit's going to be going down. Let's make uh, let's make a few of them. Maybe we can bundle the bundles, which uh, you can actually do. It's just weird. So the way bundles work is you pick it up and you right click it on items in your inventory and it'll store it in the bundle. And I'll get into more specifics on what proportion of the bar fills up in just a second. Then you can right click it again and it'll take it out. But as far as bundling bundles goes, I'm right clicking, but then sometimes it will work. It's really bizarre and I don't know if it's an intended mechanic, but it's like it's not working, but then it worked. But then it worked and I don't know how. I was right clicking the whole time and then now we, there we go. We're bundling bundles and then I can right click and unbundle the bundles. The the question is, can I bundle and then bundle the bundle bun nope. Bundle. Yeah, wait, it bundled the bundle bundle. But the bundle times one, because it has all the rabbit in it, is occupying a great deal of the bundle that it's bundled in. So it kind of defeats the purpose of the whole thing. But there you go. You can bundle bundles even if they have stuff. We're going to have to try this with a shulker in, in just a second. So, okay. So the way it determines how much of the bundle is being occupied is based on how much of that particular item as a stack is inside. So that means if you're using blocks that stack up to 64, well, you can store a whole bunch of them and then however many pistons are left, and then you'll notice that the texture changes, it's sealed up now as opposed to being open, and then if I want to retrieve those items again, then I can right click and all of them will eject into my inventory. That said, if I right click on the chest plate, the bundle is completely full, and that's because chest plates don't stack. So it means that one diamond chest plate is a stack as it stands, and that fills up the bundle. So I right click, I can let that go. So it's fairly useless for items that don't stack. But then you have like the kind of compromise, whereas like snowballs and ender pearls, because they stack up to 16, they'll fill up a lot more of the bundle than otherwise would be the case if you had something that stacks up to 64. So that's why 39 pistons plus four ender pearls plus a snowball is almost a full bundle. I'm a little sad that they don't have the interface that was shown during Minecraft Live that actually had a visual representation of all the items you had inside. Now it's kind of just like with a shulker box, it lists them out. I don't know if that'll be added later, if they just decided to scrap that system despite the fact that they teased it. But why don't we, why don't we try a shulker really quickly? I don't expect this to work, but wouldn't it be cool if it did? Let's see. No. No. You can't, you can't put a shulker in a bundle. Not exactly surprised, that seems like a, a little bit of a hack, but still, it was, it was worth trying. The only thing that I'm kind of sad about is, let's say I, I put some cobblestone into my bundle here, right? And then I continue mining, and there's cobblestone falling all over the ground, and I pick it up. It doesn't go into the bundle. You have to, once again, manually right-click it in order to, to put it in. And the reason why I'm not as big of a fan of that, and maybe there could be a, a way to like toggle that or something, is because, say like the flower forest example, like you're picking up a bunch of flowers or something like that, or you're getting uh, diorite and andesite and granite as you're mining, it'd be great if those could automatically filter into the bundle instead of you having to you know, manually re-put them in every time. There might be some kind of scenario that, that that would be really bad for that I'm not thinking of, but it just seems like rather than having to manually monitor it every time, it, it could be cool. But anyway, that's bundles. Right click with it held in order to put the item in and right click the item when it's sitting still in order to get everything ejected out of your inventory. Okay, moving along from there, we have, uh, yeah, interesting change, but very cool uh, minecart tracks underwater. That's, that's valid now. So, and you can, you can ride the minecart through it too. Look at this, it slows you down. So you just have to put down a lot more booster tracks, but there we go. Back up, we can run loops here through, through the water. Isn't that nice? And, and this way, if you ever accidentally uh, place down something that you, some water next to a minecart track or you break something that empties a lake into your minecart tracks, they're not gonna break. Nice, right? So yeah, that's, that's new. Also another 
subtle little change is you can take lava and put it in a cauldron now. Different. And this was a cool little detail that I saw someone do on Reddit. It almost looks like it's iron that's being heated by being held over the lava, which you now are able to place in the cauldron. So it's like a foundry sort of environment that, that seemed pretty nifty and worth also putting above when showing that lava can be placed inside of a cauldron. So yeah, nifty stuff. Last, or second to last, I should say, we have, oh, thank goodness for this change, because how many times have you tried to make a dirt path, and maybe, you know, you're just thinking it's going to take this, and then you're like, ah, oh, you know what, never mind, I don't think it's going to take that path, and then you cover it back up again, it turns to dirt, and then you're like, just kidding, actually, you know what, I'd love for this block to turn into a path, except you can't, because it wouldn't allow you to turn anything other than grass into a path, and it was so frustrating, but now... You can. Thank goodness you don't have to wait for the grass to grow back, or if you, like, brought the grass to a new place to make a path, you'd just be out of luck until you got silk touch and you brought it back. So dirt, coarse dirt, podzol, mycelium, all now can be turned into a path. You don't have to have grass. Thank you. Thank you so much for this. Making paths viable and not just extremely frustrating. So there's that. And then finally... I'm I'm just gonna say this one verbally because I feel like there could be a way to demo it in a in a cooler fashion later, but it'd be a standalone video. And that is, uh, shulkers are now technically farmable because if you have a shulker that gets hit with the projectile of another shulker, it will it'll make a new shulker. And so there is theoretically a way that you could make an overworld shulker farm now, which is pretty cool. I don't know the best way, though, because you have to somehow bait out the projectiles so that they're hitting other shulkers when it is that they're targeting you, though. So, anyway, someone's going to figure it out. Whether or not that's me, I might work on it a bit, and I'm sure videos might already exist because people figure things out incredibly quickly. But that's all for the changes in the new snapshot, additions, features, etc. Again, if you missed the videos on copper or the amethyst geodes, feel free to check those out linked in the description or off. It's end screens over on the side of the video. Thanks for watching, though. Make sure to like if you liked. Subscribe if you're not already. Stay tuned for future snapshot updates and things like that. Hit the bell even if you're already subscribed. And playlist in the description if you want to catch just the full update playlist with, with all updates over the course of history. But again, if you miss those other two videos, I'll link them off as end screens. You can just click right, right to it and watch it. And uh, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.